All right, now hopefully this works well. My computer Just wait a few seconds. All right, everybody. Hey, guess what? It is uh, October 26th. It's a Saturday, and it's 2019. Guess what? Uh, Ed's needing a little bit more preparation time. He didn't do his homework, so he's got to get it done early. He's got to so get I had ready. my homework done, and my computer is dragging. Oh, his computer ate his homework. Okay. Anyways. Well, at least it's not my uh, dog. Yeah, the spoiled little dog, yeah. Pampered. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but for That's that, not I mean, opinion. Well, since I'm the producer, my opinion counts, so it's spoiled. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're going to do a classic that we haven't heard in quite a while, and hopefully Ed won't be coughing and uh, all the other stuff. So with that, let us listen to... I remember a teacher that I had. Now, I, only, I, went, I went through the seventh grade. I went to the seventh grade. I left home when I was 10 years old because I was hungry. I used to, <laughs> this is true. I work in the summer, and I go to school in the winter. But I had this one teacher. He was the principal of the Harrison School in Vincennes, Indiana. To me, this was the greatest teacher, a real sage of, of my time, anyhow. He had such wisdom. And we were all reciting the Pledge of Allegiance one day. And he walked over, this little old teacher. Mr. Laswell was his name. Mr. Laswell is... is uh, <laughs> he says, I've been listening to you boys and girls recite the Pledge of Allegiance all semester, and it seems as though it's becoming monotonous to you. If I may, may I recite it and try to explain to you the meaning of each word? I, me, an individual of a committee of one pledge dedicate all of my worldly goods to give without self-pity allegiance my love and my devotion to the flag our standard O oh glory a symbol of freedom wherever she waves there's respect because your loyalty has given her a dignity that shouts freedom is everybody's job. United. That means that we have all come together. States. Individual communities that have united into 48 great states. 48 individual communities with pride and dignity and purpose all divided with imaginary boundaries, yet united to a common purpose, and that's love for country. And to the republic, republic, a state in which sovereign power is invested in representatives chosen by the people to govern. And government is the people, and it's from the people to the leaders, not from the leaders to the people for which it stands. One nation, one nation, meaning so blessed by God, indivisible, incapable of being divided with liberty, which is freedom, the right of power to live one's own life without threats, fear, or some sort of retaliation and justice, the principle or qualities of dealing fairly with others. For all, for all, which means, boys and girls, it's as much your country as it is mine. And now, boys and girls, let me hear you recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Since I was a small boy, two states have been added to our country 
and two words have been added to the Pledge of Allegiance, under God. Wouldn't it be a pity if someone said that is a prayer and that would be eliminated from schools too? All right, like I said, a classic, and it's a madhouse around here as usual. So, Ed, why don't you take it away? Cool, thank you. And we would like to thank you all for joining us this evening. And uh, it's going to be interesting because I'm going to get into some interesting education like I always do on what goes on, and especially what's going on in California. And people got to realize what's really going on in California compared to what they think is going on. Now, if anybody knows anything about the history of California when uh, uh, when uh, Clinton and uh, uh, Trump were running, they were threatened. You know, if Trump wins, they're going to burn California down. That's what the Mexicans said, the Mexican government. And that's the fun thing that, you know, and I put all that up back at the time, way back when I was posting that all around. Uh, I used to have all that information until my computer uh, crashed again. But that's the point, that people don't pay attention to what's really going on, what's going on in the circumstances around us. People are not really paying attention to what's coming down the pike. Now, right now, California is on a shutdown of their electricity, and they're shutting their water off. And you got to realize that when they shut their electricity down, it's affecting everybody in the state of California and their electricity. Now, I know, and I've already talked to people in California, everybody's running to the grocery stores. The shelves are um, em- emptying really quick because they're telling a minimum of five days with no electricity and several major structures in California. And they're talking almost 2 million people without water and electricity. And it's already started. At 5 o'clock was when they were shutting down electricity throughout the state. And so and you can type this up. It's all around on the Internet, and this is the saddest part what's going on, is that they're going through this structure, and this goes through Pelosi and Newsom and the politics in California when it really comes down to it because they're, they're not getting their way when it comes down to it with some of the circumstances, including with Trump. Because, you know, uh, you know, people like me, we're not doing what we're told. So, excuse me, you know, these people forget that they can go back and take their religion and take it back to their country because they're not part of our country. They're not natives. They're not Americans. They don't have rights. They're privileged personnel. And that's the one thing you've got to realize, that your elected and public employees are privileged personnel. Your police departments are nonprofit agency. Your state departments are nonprofit agencies. And see, that's the point. They're nonprofit. And so when you people don't get it when it's a nonprofit agency compared to what's going on. Because, see, when you have things, you're supposed to be liable. And, see, if you're not liable for your actions, you know, you're, 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 you're screwed. And that's what goes on. We're all living this structure. You know, we're living it day in and day out. And this is what always gets to me is how come people cannot see what's really going on. And this is that this is the saddest part because right now California is going, you know, right now they're they're shutting off water, electricity. People are panicking. Gas. They're making a buku bucks on the stores and gas right now, and that's what they're doing. They're claiming that on the income tax, property taxes, and everything. And this is the one thing that people have got to start seeing what they're doing. They are really doing this against you, the people. And so that is the whole point. They don't want you to have rights. They want you to be a slave to them, especially Pelosi. She doesn't want you to have rights. You know, I mean, I got a videotape that, you know, we'll play next week. I didn't get time because I just got it before I, uh, before we hit the airwaves tonight, and I just got it. And I got to get that, and I will get that put up tonight. I got to figure out how to do it the way uh, I got to figure out how to put it up. Because I just got this information, and a video explains the history of California with Newsom and Pelosi and stuff, and it's about an eight-minute video, and it's a real fact. And this is the one thing that, you know, you got to watch out and step out of the movie, and people say, oh, well, it's all based on, uh, you know, corruption and all this stuff. Well, yeah, it is, but you're allowing it to happen. You're allowing these people to rape, rob your children for money. You're allowing these people 
to make the money off of the birth certificate straw man account, you know, by putting your kids and stuff and stuff in jail. And that is the one thing that is so sad because these kids are being the ones that are being targeted on this stuff. Your children, your grandchildren. You know, that's why it's so important that, I, you know, I've been putting up the structure in California, too, where you don't need a hunting and fishing license. Under California law, it's very simple. Article uh, 1, Section 25 says you don't need a fishing license. I know. I grew up in California. I used to fish on the docks and everywhere all around California. I never had a fishing license when I went fishing in California. You know, and then when I come up to Oregon, I never had one up here. And then all of a sudden I'm going through this where I have to get this license and that license and being told how I have to do these things. And it's frustrating because I'm Native. And Native does not just mean that, and even though my family is Cheyenne Nation, but Native does not mean Indian. Native means that your family's been here since the 1800s, 1700s. So when people start saying that, oh, you'd have to be an Indian, they're throwing this bull out to you to control you. And that's the one thing. It's all mind control. Because if I can control your mind and make you think, and I can control your vote, and you're not going to vote the way I want you to vote, and I can control everything about your life, that's what's going on. This is not a joke. It's happening. We're living it. Now, California is having major, major fires in California right now. And I've watched some of the videotapes this last few days where they're questioning on, oh, I think it's called uh, um, lasers that, you know, a couple trucks, you're watching these lasers hit the car and it melts the block and it goes right through the hood of the car and melts the block. And so this is the one thing that is so frustrating that we have this stuff happening all around you. You're living it. This is not a joke. And, you know, and then people stand up and say, well, we're not going to do anything about it. It doesn't affect me. Well, when you can't have water and you don't have water and food, you know, you, it affects you. And then if you go out and get water and food and they tell you you can't do that because it's a privilege for you to have food and they say you can't fish for your food and you can't hunt from your food, and that's a crock. And they're getting away with it because people are allowing them to get away with this. Seriously, they're allowing this structure to happen. And uh, how do we stop it? It's simple. We, You and I, we have to file the criminal charges against these men and women. If we don't file the criminal charges against them, that's how they're getting away with this. That is the point of how they're getting away with this stuff. Because, you know, if you don't file the criminal charges, nobody else is going to do it. And so you better wake up. You better wake up because your children, your bloodline. If you have children, that's your bloodline. And if you don't defend your bloodline, you have no grandchildren, no life. So who's going to talk about you when you die? I mean, that's the point. I know that one because, you know, I don't have kids. So, you know, I've already lost that point. But it's like this is the one thing that is coming down the pike is that, you know, with the fires that are going on in California. Now, we just went through the California fires not long ago. And so they started doing a blackout in California at 5 p.m. tonight. So if people don't have candles, if they don't have power generators to, for their refrigerators and, you know, even for television to even keep their, their computers going on, to keep communications, to keep their phone charged. And then you got to remember, with this, this is going to have effect, too, on what do they call that? People's cell phones. Because once the cell phones go down, everybody's affected. So that's the point is that how come people are not seeing this truth that you're living right now? I mean, you're living this. Your grandchildren are going to live it. And so if you don't start protecting your children, your circumstances, everybody's screwed. So California is going through a blackout right now. It started at 5 o'clock p.m. tonight. So uh, Modesto... Uh, stuff in the Bay Area is shut down. Uh, Sonoma is shut down. Uh, anything in the wine areas are all shut down in the wine areas from Sonoma and Livermore and that area. And then the other structures are doing shutting down the structure down in San Diego and some of the areas in L.A. So, there's, like I said, there's going to be, a, you know, it looks like min minimum a million, but it looks like there's going to be two and, two and a quarter million people affected by this. And they're talking about having this uh, shut down for a minimum of five days. We'll see what happens. But five days. 
That's what they're talking. Minimum five days to shut down with a maximum 15 days. So you figure with the 15 days and the five days and this structure, what's going to happen? What is that going to do to your children? What is it going to do to your grandchildren? What's going to happen with the structure around you? And what's going to affect your, your friends and neighbors or your family, the people you know? And Newsom and all these guys, you know, are the structure in it. You know, I mean, it's like California is setting up to national gun compensation. They just pass this is what they all do with it, nobody knowing about it. You know, and that's the point. You know, I mean, this was passed through in October, so they can put national law to take your guns away. And that was done because this is coming up. What they're doing is they're making you starve. They're going to make sure that you can't protect yourself. And, of course, I did put up, and we do have the structure uh, on new.org and trackers, that says that in California we've got the stuff from the state attorney general. You don't need a permit to have a gun. You could actually have a tank in California. And they don't want you to know that reality because if you knew that reality, that would stop a lot of things in their, their, their structure. They, this is the one thing. They're doing this deliberately to harm you and your children. This is not an accident. Pelosi, Feinstein, Boxer, Mag, Maxine Waters, all these people are involved in this structure. They're all involved in it. So that's what it sort of stuns me when people say, oh, we have these rights. We have this going on. No, you don't. You don't have nothing going on. Because if they started taking away your water, your food, your electricity for life, I mean, this affects the disabled and elderly who are on life support. So you got to remember, you, know, you got people that are on life support. You got people in hospitals that it's going to affect. They're going to say, we're not going to shut down the hospitals, but we've seen that done before in the past. So, and, and people go to trust these people. That's what it gets to me. People say, you're going to trust these people. That's what horrifies me. These people are not trustworthy. And then people vote for these people. Of course, I don't vote, and I'll make that publicly known. I don't vote. I don't play that game. I'm not a registered voter. I took away my vote years ago because I am a lawful native. And if you go by, and we've done this on our talk show, and if you actually comprehend what's going on with Amendment 17 of the Constitution, the only ones that can vote technically are lawful blood, or not lawful, but legal citizens called elected and public employees immigrants cannot vote and that's the point they cannot but they cannot vote so you got to realize that that affects this structure so when they say that you know we have this right or that right that's it's hogwash you're you're not paying attention what they're doing to you and your children so when it comes down to this, now they're going after this and the, the gun control because now they're going to the gun control that they passed October 19th uh, in California. The House and Senate Newsom passed it and signed it October 19th to take away your arms. And I will pull that up and read you the actual federal law here in a minute. This was done in California court systems. But see, this is the one thing that you have to know your rights and you have to file your rights. And people don't file you. If you don't file your rights with the House and Senate, you don't file your rights with the county clerk, you don't sit there and file it with museums and stuff, you have no rights. People say, I have rights. Trust me, you don't. Mine is filed. They freaked out on me. My house has been robbed when I was in ICU. All this stuff. I filed all this stuff. I'm going after them on this. Okay? And then like my neighbor said, you know, my neighbor's witnessed my house being robbed by the cops. But they're like, oh, we're not going to say anything because we're not going to lose our job, our business, our families. They, I mean, my family was destroyed by this this town and county back in 19, or 2003 and stuff. And this is what shows me, you know, where are Americans? Where are the Americans? You know, I would like to see where Americans really are instead of these damn idiots out there saying, I'm an American. I have a flag. And you're flying the British war flag. Read and look up the definition of your flags. And we've got that up. So you're flying war flags up there. So that's the same flag that they raped, robbed, and murdered. Uh, what do they call that? You know, the Indians were raped, robbed, and murdered. That was part of uh, Wounded Knee. So it's like learn real history. So, I mean, I have this thing, and it's a court document. It's number 
17-56081, filed July 17, 2018. Molly C. Dreyer, Clerk, United States Clerk of Appeals, Court of Appeals. This is, they say, for not publication because they don't want you to know this truth. All right, United States Court of Appeals, this was filed, and this was done by Virginia Duncan uh, plaintiff in appeals by the State Attorney General of California. And this court case gives you the right to own a machine guns, tanks, and everything, because they try to say that you didn't have a right to own firearms, and that's where Newsom signed this bill to take away your your arms. And remember, Newsom's is signing this structure dealing with, oh, Nazi Germany called the United Nations. Because remember, United Nations is still run by the British government and Nazi Germany. That hasn't changed. It's still the same structure. So if you're not paying attention to the real truth and reality of the facts around you instead of living this fantasy that people are living by Disney and, oh, this ain't going to affect me. I mean, come on. If you don't have your food resources right now in California, it just affected you. They're going to starve. And you think the restaurants are going to have, be uh, running in, you know, 10 to 15 days? They're going to be out of food because there's no way to ship the food there. See, this is what it shows me how stupid people are, mentally challenged stupid people are. Because, you know, oh, they're going to just say, I can go to the grocery store. It's going to be there tomorrow. 7-Eleven is going to be there. Well, everything in Sonoma is shut down. You can't get into Sonoma because of the fires. Literally, you can't get in. Everything's shut down. They got barricades out there. You go on the news, you watch the barricades. You know, so that's the whole point, that you don't have a right unless you have a right filed and unless you know your public employees. They know you, that you have to take your liability and your responsibility in your hands, and they comprehend that, and you know that. You have to do it that way. There's no forgiveness in this world, and there's none of this other fantasy people want to do in religion. Because when the shit hits the fan, where is God? They, I mean, and that's the point. You know, that's the main point right there. So anyhow, I want to get into this other point, too, that uh, I did come across this as one thing that you could do. Uh, we'll get this up, and I'll put it in the uh, deal in the video here, and I'll try to get it actually into the comments uh, uh, here in the video here in a minute. But this is claim, claims, complaints, I mean, against go the government. And also, too, that goes to cops, attorneys, lawyers. And so you have another outlet. But, see, instead of filing, and this also, too, report government vehicles and misuse of their reckless driving, and that includes a cop when he comes up and pulls behind you, turns his light on. Uh, that's a misuse of public vehicle. That's a misuse. That's reckless driving. So step out and start correlating how all this stuff comes to play. Because, see, when you, do, you file their complaint, and they say file a complaint, but a complaint is a whiner. So you do file their complaint, but you make sure that you do an affidavit with criminal charges. And if you don't write the criminal charges, it doesn't exist. It's that simple. You can write, oh, I can complain, I'm a whiner, but what good is that going to do when you're whining and crying? I mean, you know, that's what it stuns me is where's the intelligence of people? Where are the intelligence of people? Where's the education? Where are people living and what reality are you living? Because, see, without the reality of what's going on, you have nothing. And that is the bottom line. You have no rights. So right now, California, they're going to be fighting over food. And they know it. They did it deliberately. This is something that was not just an accident. This was well planned. I mean, seriously, this was well planned. And you've got to realize how well planned this stuff really is when it comes down to it. You know, it didn't just happen overnight. This stuff is going on being planned. So how do you stop this? You got to file your rights. You got to start working with people. You got to start collaborating with people and working with them and knowing what your law is and knowing what the circumstances of the Senate and the House bills and knowing what's really going on in your life around you. Because you got to really look at what's going on in California right now. They're shutting down the state right now. You can't get food in a lot of areas in the state right now. 
and I've been talking to I've talked to many people in the last 24 hours on this stuff that were going around the state in different parts of the state. And so that is the point. This is going on right now in California. And so right now they're living this disaster. I'm trying to find uh, us live on YouTube right now so I can post this, but I don't see us live on YouTube right now. So that's an error. Um, so I uh, can't do anything right now to get some of this stuff up because apparently we're not live. So uh, anyhow, I mean, the bottom line comes down to is how are you going to protect yourself? That means you. You cannot call a cop because the cops don't work for you, and the Supreme Court has already admitted that. Supreme Court says that the cops work for, oh, themselves, for the county, the city, to rape your children, to rob you. Supreme Court has actually stated they can rape you and your children and they can't go to jail. You can see it all the time. Now someone, sometimes there's a couple new cases where they're starting to indict some of these public servants. Finally, but the point is we need to get these administrative rules changed. Remember, they're administrative rules. So if they have a job and they have a circumstances, that's the point that comes down to this point. You know, and it's so disgusting that we're living this living this hell we're literally living this hell and so and you and you everybody goes my children my children you don't care about your children prove you do how are you defending your child you're not defending your child that's the point you know and if you don't file your rights you have no children you have no rights to your children and that's already been proven the supreme court i'll pull it up and i'll tell you a couple of these court cases the supreme court already says you don't have a right to your child unless you own your child the Ninth Circuit Court came out with that not long ago when I put that on the website. Been talking about that for some time. They, and that's the point. They already said that you already don't have a right because you are a domestic corporation member of Washington, D.C. And everybody goes, well, I'm a member of the state. Oh, yeah, the right. what state? Whose state? You know, come on. Stop this crap you're living you know, you're not you're not a member of a state or a corporation unless you want to be. It's like Social Security. It's voluntary. You know, and when we put that up, you know, don't get your kid a Social Security card. You get your kid a Social Security card, you already committed treason. Because a child cannot have a Social Security by federal law until he's 18 or she's 18. Age of consent. But lying, cheating, and steal to your children, and most people do that all the time because we tell them, oh, Christmas is there, Easter is there, holidays, all right? That's a different structure. You know, we can, we have the, the, the winter and summer festivals and that, but that's not the Christmas and holidays. You know, quit doing this to your children of the structure that you're putting your children in this living hell because you're doing that. And the other point, too, is like, you know, hiring a lawyer. I mean, I've been dealing with people with that. Well, I'm going to do this. Well, hiring a lawyer, an attorney waives your Constitution protection rights. And it makes you a ward of that domestic court system of the British government or whatever court system you want to call it. Because uh, Article 1, Section 2, uh, Article 1, Section 1 of the tribunal courts is the legislative courts, and that's the British government. And I've actually put that up. I've read that stuff already on the air before. So, and that's the point. You're a British slave. You have no rights. The British government could kill you any time, and that's called a cop. That's how the cops get away with murder, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So if you want to really know about the rights on uh, of an attorney, that's Title 8, USC 1481. So that's the point. Natural-born or naturalized citizen that you have to claim yourself to be lawful, not legal. And that even you could even go to Florida statue on that. Florida statute is 120, and that's part of 5 U.S.C. Administrative Process Act, federal and state, since they are not Article Three courts. Article Three courts is a constitutional court. That's the first court in 1787 in Philadelphia. And that's the point. You know, if you're not sitting there and going by this structure, and then you have to file in Washington, D.C., and there's other ones that we'll get on to and get that up, and I'll post that on the talk show as soon as we're off the air because I was trying to get some things posted on 
now in the commentaries and the, the deal to, to do it, but apparently, you know, I don't see us live, so I can't do that like I've done in the past or we've done in the past. Uh, Go ahead. I can't find us live either, and yet I'm still streaming live, so it's probably YouTube uh, messing around. Okay. Yeah, it could be because, I mean, I was posting the talk show up around before we got on, and then Facebook uh, said we can't put it up anymore. So, but anyhow, and then let's get into the banking debt because the IRS banking debt, that is, and this is what's going on with people who are living with California too, because the national debt is by the British government. It's not we the people. Because the British government owes we, the people, under House Resolution 192. And you got to realize, they owe us, we, the people. So under 28 U.S.C. 30002, under you know, definition 15A, 15B, and 15C, A is a federal British corporation. That's your government, a federal British corporation. And I argue with people all the time about this and it's like you know that's called a tribunal court that's an article one section court and then the agency's department that comes from a commission a board anything else in that structure comes that way and then and this is the point it comes from that structure and i mean we put this up so you know go go read 28 usc 3002 definition it's called the British government, called your church, called your Bible, called your structure. And I argue with people all the time on that. Your federal British corporation is your Bible. It hasn't changed. It's been the same structure that's filed in the Oregon State House and Senate. It's been filed in Congress the same way. It's called the British government. It hasn't changed. And then the other point you want to read is section rules and guidance, section 16. That explains this structure to you of that, and that goes into Section 16 as part of Secretary, uh, Securities and Exchange Act of 1934. And that deals with public utilities. So your public utility, technically, if you're native, you're not supposed to pay your water electricity bill. And they're getting it because people are filing this across the country. So it is interesting that this is going across the country, and they're panicking because people are really waking up. So with them burning down California, and they got to burn down California to stop this stuff, and because, oh, that's right, look at all the immigrants in California. And under Title 14, the administrative rules of Title 14 of the Corporation Act was never passed. It was only passed in the corporation. It's not constitutionally protected or passed. Everything after the 13th Amendment, 1867, is not administrative rule for you or me if you're native. That only protects to, it pertains to registered church members and elected and public employees. And let's not forget, immigrants have no rights whatsoever at all, ever. They have no rights in this country. They have no rights to food. That's law. That's federal law. And that goes back to 1789, and that's part of the treaties of 1770 with the natives. So when you're reading this structure, it's like, a, a, you know, adopted rules. You know, this goes to 17 CRF 240, 16A, Section 8 of A. And so that means that gets into the adoption of the exchange and release program. And that was done, redone in June 14, 1996. And that is 61 FR 30392. And that was amended. And remember, these amendments are done by the corporation called your elected and public employees. And yes, I say I was an elected and public employee. I've been in office, I've done this stuff. And then when I stood up on it, they've literally tried to take me out and assassinate me on it. You know, I mean, trust me, I know. I've been through this so many points and so many times. So and this is the one thing that, you know, in, in the county of Sonoma, this was done back in 1991, shall be enforced. And this goes supersedes the rule proceeding back. And this goes to Sox and Exchange, what they're trying to change and what they change in California. So that's why we're putting these forms up. We'll get these forms out. And this is, I've already got this already on, 
this stuff is already on the uh, October 19, 2019 YouTube uh, Oregon Tractors. I'm going right off of what I already put on last week on this stuff. Because I already put this stuff up, and that's what I was hoping that I could start getting this up. And I'm going to be copying this, put it back on that tonight's show. So that way we get it. Because, see, that's the whole point, is that if you're not protecting your children, you know, and then it goes to, oh, the Indian Treaties Act, Article 2. This is the Constitution. The Constitution of the United States says that the natives don't pay taxes, shall not be even elected. You're not even... Uh, the natives are participating in elections. They can actually be charged criminally for that. And, you know, I've, sometimes I feel like charging some of these people criminally, these chiefs. You know, oh, I'm a chief. I protect my people. You don't give a shit about your people. If you did, you would know this stuff. You would protect them. You would have food raising. You'd be collecting rainwater. You wouldn't be going through this problem. You know, and that's the other point that I just noticed that in the security and exchange for the Indian treaties, all of a sudden that's not on the exchange right now on the YouTube on the on the federal listing. But the Indian treaties, and this is uh, Justice U.S. law, Indian treaties clause two shall have the power. So in other words, the treaties are over your constitution. That's a fact, because the treaties were done with the British government because your constitution was written by the British government. See, I mean, and this is the point, and you can go back and look at the you know, Cherokee Nation versus Georgia and Worcester uh, uh, versus Georgia. This is 425. You know, and the courts speak on this, that the Cherokee Nation all right, was not a sovereign state. All right, we're not a state. We are free people. They, this is the point that people, they, they want to interpret when they read this stuff. They think they're a lawyer. They think they're an attorney, and they want to interpret it. They want to be like these people that are raping your children and stealing your families. So the treaties go back to the structure of the Constitution, and it says that in the, the Constitution, Article 2, Section 10, the treaties are the law of the land. So and that, if you're Native, and this goes back to even this was redone in the structure of the 19, and, they, and I've argued with people going, well, the treaties were done back then. It doesn't affect after the Civil War. Read the Indian Appropriation Act, March Third, eighteen seventy-one. The the stuff is there. Read it. I've even got it up on our website. I've got it all posted on Oregon Trackers on YouTube channels all around. Because the thing is, is that when it came down to it, they had to right away because they put right away with the railroads back then. Okay, the treaty, the Indians didn't have a problem with that, but they had a problem with their cattle being slaughtered. I mean, their buffalo being slaughtered. And see, and then we're not taught the law. So when they were shooting and protect their food resources, they were being charged by the army, the military. And remember, the military is supposed to be working on protecting us, and I've got that up on another law structure because the army is supposed to be protecting the native People. That's the Indians as well as their own blood, their own native structure, and that goes back to 1863. You know, and then when you want to get into some of these court cases, we've got it. You know, and then you know, here's another one. You know, dealing with exchange whiskey for the rights. You know, and that's the United States 43 uh, 43 gallons of whiskey, 93 U.S. 188. 192-1872, Dick versus United States 208, United States 340-355-56, and that was done recently, too, 18, or 1908. 1908. You know, and then you go back in the structure with New York and all this structure back in 1867. I mean, you know, I mean I've got this stuff right on the YouTube channel. I've got the stuff that should be we, I believe we got on Oregon Trackers. I don't know. We haven't got the site up for just Indians yet, but we're going to get the site up just for Indians. So all this stuff goes for Native and all this stuff so people don't have to fish around and try to find stuff. They just go click on the Indian structure, and it comes up with the land rights and everything. 
because we, we're we're working on it as best we can, folks. I mean, you know, we're on limited structure of what we can do, limited time of what we can do too. You know, you know, I'm I'm writing all the time, and we've got other stuff that we're dealing with. So, you know, we're doing the best we can on this stuff. You know, and then also too, they've got structures going live across the country on preparation for the end of the dollar bill. The federal corporation they're talking about this live. You know, Trump's already been talking about putting the structure to end the dollar bill. And people are all freaking out over that. But you got to realize that's what Kennedy did. That's why Kennedy was murdered, to eliminate the dollar bill so that way the banks weren't going to run your stuff. You know, I mean, I get comments where people tell me, I pay 26% of my stuff to the, to the government in taxes. Well, are you native? If you're not native... Then you have to pay. Immigrants and public employees have to pay by law, because going back with the Bankruptcy Act, and the Indians and or uh, natives and church members under the Bankruptcy Act have to pay the British government debt that they owe we the people. And I put that stuff up, and we have that uh, put out, and anybody could get a hold of me on uh, even on Facebook, Edward Johnson on Facebook. I have the white teddy bear with the red rose. You know, then we have the United States for America elected and public employees oversight committees. Then we have Oregon trackers on Facebook. And then I have the recall Kate Brown because I filed the first recall on Kate Brown, which, you know, people panicked on that one because I did it lawfully, not legally. You know, and Mike did a wonderful job on what he was doing. But, you know, it's like, and then they said that he was short because on the recall of Kate Brown, because the recall, because when I filed my original paperwork, was 229,000 signatures they needed. But I did it lawfully, so that way you didn't have to get 229,000 signatures. If I got 1,000 autographs from each people that filed it with the Secretary of State and registered, she would have been out of office. She would have been convicted. But when I filed my paperwork, right after that, Kate Brown changed administrative rules with the House and Senate, and they voted to raise it from 229000 to 292000 It's all on record. It's all there. It's proven. Also, and then when it comes into the structure of the natives, this is the point that, you know, native doesn't mean that, and I've already sent this out to, you know, I've got people that were saying, you know, I'm colored, and I'm going, Okay. You're colored. I mean, hang on a minute. I'm going to pull this up here in a minute. Because I'm going to explain something to you about being colored in this country. See, this is the one thing that people always come to these things and they, they go off on these tangents and they don't read real history. See, this is the saddest part that we've got that people are not reading what history is. They're not reading what the facts are. They don't know what the facts are because they have never read it. They're just being told how to dictate to the structure. And that's the same thing. When you register that kid and you're thinking that, oh, you're getting these tax breaks right now today for that child. No, you're not. You're putting that child in debt because then that way you're telling that child, oh, they have to pay this debt for you. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're telling you, you have to pay this debt. For the child, because the British government is giving you money off the banknote, off of your child's straw man birth certificate bond. And so this is the point that people have got to get to the facts on it. So, I mean, and I have the stuff with the Federal Reserve stuff that anybody wants it, I'll pass it down. Because remember, the Federal Reserve and the Bankruptcy Act was done by the banks of London and Berlin. They went bankrupt to we, the people. And remember, Berlin, Germany, London, England, and Germany. Okay, and then it comes to the Bank of Paris, because they fall through, and the Bank of uh, Italy and Israel, and everybody keeps going, oh, we got to save Israel, and it's like, people, pay attention. What the hell has Israel got to do with the price of tea in China? If you want to go pay that, send them to China. Let China deal with them. Because Israel is not our problem. We are not to pay China for Israel's problem. And that's what people, that's what you're doing. You're not seeing how you're doing what you're doing. Now, let me get down here because I want to read this part too. I mean, this is the one thing that when it comes down to what we're doing to the children on the birth certificate bonds and people don't realize to file to own yourself. 
Because if we don't own you, you have no rights. If you don't own that child until that child's 18, that's how the state of Oregon comes in and steals your child. Because you give them permission. So United States, citizen, District of Columbia is misleading, all right? Because you're a citizen of the District of Columbia, and that's Willerton Steel Corporation versus Fox. 298 USC, or US, I mean, 19380 T E dot E D 1141.96 S S C or C T dot seven three three or seven seven three. I mean, so when you're doing that, you're claiming that you are a British subject under the Roman Catholic Church called that Bible. And people keep going, hey, quit going on the Bible. You're tra- chasing people away, and I get it, but you know, I'm reading the structure of how it works. I'm letting you know what it works. See, and, and then you put your children to this, and you know, and then they become slaves. And then you're wondering why the schools have a right to come in and take your kid because you don't own your kid. The school owns your child when it's on that property, when it's in the school district. So you don't even have rights to your child when you take that child to the school district. You don't have a right to that child. Because the minute you put it and you don't own that child, the state can come in and take that child without a warrant. You know, at least the Ninth Circuit Court came up and said that they have a warrant, and I'll find that one here in a minute. But the Ninth Circuit Court says they have to have a warrant now, a wet ink warrant. And that's where you have to comprehend where a wet ink warrant is. So this goes back to, and you're going to love this, property clause. This is 1787, lands. Remember, Congress could not ban slavery in the territories. Missouri with Cabayas was unconstitutional. Because in 1866, persons of African descent cannot be or were not entitled to be citizens under the United States Constitution. And uh, the plaintiff, without standing, filed a suit. And this goes back to 1866. That's your Dred Scott case. The color folks can't be citizens, and they should be proud because you got to know this because you can't be a corporation member of the British government. And that comes under the due process due clause, under the Fifth Amendment. See, that's what stuns me. You know, we've got this stuff in place, but people don't read it. They don't comprehend what the words mean. But then again, they want to go cause people problems. You know, they want to tell people, you have to register, you have to vote, you have to do this. I don't vote. Why would you want to vote to the corporation as dictating to you stealing your children? And so that's what we're physically living right now. And that's what California is freaking out because they got to deal with this right now because their electricity is off in a lot of parts of California. Their water is being shut off in California. You know, we don't know. You know, we'll find out later on how much it affects on the areas. But like I said, I talked to several dozen people uh, this morning and late this last night. You know, they're never getting prepared. They're getting geared up. And, you know, can you imagine the gas sales that were going on today for generators and stuff for this shutdown? So that's another way to boost the economy, the taxes, the tax income. You got to look at how much the taxes were coming into California on a shutdown. And then they're going off the other point because if people die from it, oh, that's another structure. They die from it. The birth certificate strawman account is paid. Who gets that? You know, I got another one that I love this point that I've got another one going back to the 1860s. You know, it's like this is a cartoon that was done in the newspaper back then. A cartoon done in the newspaper back in 1867. When you're done picking the cotton, I'll teach you about Jesus. I mean, this is a cartoon that was run in the newspapers in 1867. Yeah, I mean, this stuff has been there, but, you know, people don't read it. They don't get it, or no, they don't give a shit, or they don't care until it hits them, and then they got to care, you know, and that's why when you're doing the nonprofit structure, you're going after nonprofits, all right? That's you have to get the form. 
It's a 4506A form. And you want to do your research. I mean, I've talked to several people, and they didn't want to do the research. They wanted me to do it. And I said, well, you're not paying me. You're not paying my electricity, my water bill. You're not providing me food. So why am I sitting there doing you? Why do I want to do your paperwork? You know, I mean, I don't want your money. They want your money. Put some money on my water electricity bill. That's a different deal. Because I don't want your money. I'm not gonna. I don't want to be part of that. It's bad enough. I'm involved with some involved in some of that. So I'm gonna get this other point on judges. So you got to remember, your judges. It depends on the judge. Is he lawful or legal? And that's the one thing. When you go into the judge, you want to make sure that judge has an oath to the Constitution, not the corporation. And that's Shaver S H E or S. Uh, S-C-H-E-U-E-R versus Rhodes, 416, United States, 23294-S-C-2-1683. One, six, one, six, and that was done in 1974. See, this, is the, this ain't that long ago. And note that the judge is a state officer. He's the officer of that corporation court that's called the, the Article One Vatican Court System. And one of the judges acts as a, tras, a trespasser of law. When a judge does not follow the law, the judge loses subject matter, jurisdiction. The judge orders are not valid. They're void on the on the structure. If they're not going by the Constitution, they're void on the face. I mean, they have all this stuff out there for us to read, for us to, to pay attention. So when a judge doesn't act on the Constitution, they're supposed to take a constitutional oath under the 1787 treaties with the native, the original treaties with the native Indians. Okay, and that goes with the Navajo and the Sioux Nations and the Crow Nations and all this back in that time. Those treaties matter. They have significant meanings. and that they, they really do matter. But, see, people go to court and they go, well, I go to court. I've been noticed that I'm going to have to go to court. And who are you going to court for? You or them. You know, and that is the other point, too. If you want to read Title 12, that's a good one to read Title 12. But Federal Reserve notes are valueless. Value. They have no value. They're valueless. They have no deal. And that's Section 1. Uh, 1001-4657-CH, uh, and that dealing with your check. And that comes from the school district of National Bank. The school district versus National Bank. And that number is 211P2D723. And that means if you're using the word person, I've just went through that with people, and they're going, person. I said, person's an inanimate object. Person does not exist. So, and that's the point. Income tax or neither was property tax. And I'm fighting that one, and i got to bring that one up here pretty soon, because property taxes are fraud. See, this is the point that people don't comprehend on this stuff. You know, when you do this stuff and you stand up for your rights, you have to know your rights. And this is the point that educating your children so they know it. So, I mean, property taxes... You know, I've already sent some stuff out in property taxes here recently because I'm dealing with that myself. I've been told by the county that if I don't follow this administrative rule, I'll be shot, murdered, cold blood. So, I mean, and that's the point. We want to go after the guy who has the property right claim and that claiming a new property right claim. And that comes really that comes down to the man that works for the state. So whoever's working for the state and has the, oh, what do they call that? The copyright. So you want to look at the copyright state, and then you go after it and look up and do the research and find out on the nonprofit structure of the nonprofit. 
and find out who's registered as a copyright owner of the nonprofit, and that's the one you want to file the criminal charges on. And you want to go after his home, his children, his bloodline. You don't have to have respect for him. He has no respect for you, so why are you showing some respect from a guy that's sitting there rape robbing your children? See, I mean, this is the thing that we're living with, and how do people deal with this? I mean, even if you go back to the structure of Black Law Dictionary, the 10th edition, and this is 2014, slavery. Well, and there, that's the point. You're still a slave if you are elected and public employee. Of course, we have no choice in that matter when you are, and I've been there. But the other point, if you're a registered church member, you have no rights. You're a registered slave. You can do what your master tells you. And that's the kind of Bible. That is called Romans 13, section 1 of Romans 13. It's in your Bible. You know, and see, the 13th Amendment of the Constitution, you know, technically eliminated slavery, but the 14th Amendment just twisted the words around so that way you became a corporation backed by the capital and large C. I mean, this stuff was designed very well, very smart. These people did this stuff over you and your children. No, this is not a joke. This is what the the deal is, and people get freaked out on this stuff, and they can't deal with life sometimes. So Romans 13.4 in your Bible says, Thou shalt do what the judge tells me to do, because I'm his slave. He works for God. God knows better than I do. See, that's the one thing. I just have problems when people try to tell me that, you know. And I can say that. I have that right to say that because, oh, yeah, that's right. Tell you the truth, I have been dead 13 times. Lung and heart shut down. Failure. Been shot to have to been through all this shit in my life. No, I'm not bragging about it because it hurts. I mean, even today, I'm still going through heart issues and stuff. I live on nitro and stuff. And, you know, breathing hurts. So sometimes... You know, when I breathe, I feel like I'm out in the ocean. I'm in the uh, in uh, the freezing air. It feels like I'm in 20 below zero. If you ever try breathing when you're out in the air, but I mean, that's just what I have to live with. This is what you know, life dealt me at the point of where I'm living. But I can't miss because I'm still here. So, but the point is, is educating ourselves so we're not going through this trauma. We're not going through this every time. And so that's the point, making sure your children comprehend this stuff. And like I said, if anybody wants to, I can even make sure that I get you the, the paperwork that I served the sheriffs in the state of Oregon on their jobs committing racketeering fraud and extortion. I share every sheriff in the state, and that's on new.oregon trackers. You just go and hit, I forgot what the link is right off the top of my head, but you click on it, it's got all the sheriffs that have been served. But also, too, remember, a 1099 form, every time you pay anything to any public employee, your water bill, your phone bill, your cell phone bill, anything, you want to file that 1099 because they're making income and they're writing it off on the taxes. Because you filed your Social Security number with them, so what they're doing is they're writing it off on your Social Security, so they're pocketing the money twice, three times. Remember, they do have three books that they're going by. Literally, they have three books they go by. And then once you start comprehending, they have three books. You know, they have an outgoing, incoming, and then the back book for their party money. Standards, been that way for years. It's been that way since they put the Banking Act in 1932. That's when FDR put the Banking Act in, Executive Order 2040, that was started out at $630,000 on each birth certificate. And you got to figure that $630,000 for each birth certificate registered in 1933, when they register a kid today, what is that doing What the banks are doing and they're raising income to build buildings around you, cutting your trees, cutting your forests, putting roads in that you are paying for. And they're going, well, we have to have road taxes. We have to have this. You already pay your taxes when you buy a tire, spark plug. Everything's already doubled and tripled in it. But they already got the money. So the money is already outlined. It's already there. And there is another good point. If you don't realize this point, go look in uh, 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 Florida. And uh, you go type in Florida Supreme Court with uh, Admiralty or uh, Admiralty Courts 
or vessels in dry dock, and you type that in your internet, you'll see the Supreme Court in Florida. The top the, it was built like actually like a ship. Dry dock ship is built that way. See, they got the signs right there, putting it right in your face. And that's the thing is, is that how come people are not protecting themselves, protecting their uh, corporations? Because a corporation is an artificial person, a legal creation. You get that? Legal creation, creator. By under the authority of the laws of the state or nation. And everybody goes, I'm a national. And if you go to Executive Order 2040, citizens are national or enemy to we the people of this country. You know, I want to be a person. And everybody says, I'm a person. That's why when I talk to people, you know, I correct them. And then I get to the point at times where I just don't want to waste my time talking to them anymore because they're not catching on. Because I keep going, I'm a person, I'm a person, I'm a person. And it's like, so you don't exist. Then they want to argue the point that they want to exist. And I said, you can't exist. So either you're man, woman, or you're a person. A person doesn't exist. I mean, it's so, so simple. The facts are there. You've got the laws right in front of your face, and that's the thing that people are not paying attention to, the corporation administrative rules. That's why when you do this and you file your paperwork, and anytime you put a paperwork into the city, county, state, whatever it is, the uh, whatever case you're working on, you always want to put the structure of 1938, the Foreign Administration Registration Act, to see if they're registered and make sure and go after them to register and prove it. Because, see, the thing is, the settlement of certificate is also known as the birth certificate, and that was started in uh, 1837. But remember, they couldn't put that in place, and they didn't put that technically in place until 1940 when they put the administrative rules in, in 1940 when administrative rules came in place. But they already put the structure in back in the 1800s, and so that way you were called the property of the corporation called the state, the Senate, the House, you, the, they own you. And so when they own you, you have no rights. And then you say, well, my kid has this and my kid has that. When you sign over your kid, right, you have nothing. You sign your kid over, you know, I mean, and that goes down to, and you can look at this going to United States, uh, 18 U.S.C. 1028, Section uh, 1508. Well, this is identification, who you are, who you registered with, who owns you. You know, and that even goes back, and that's like already brought up, U.S.C., and that goes to 1028. And this means the artificial person, local government. That means your city, county, and state. You know, if you don't have a driver's license, they go after you. It's like, I literally, I built my house without building permits. They came after me, and I went, hey, this is what we're doing. And, you know, I mean, everybody's arguing with me. Well, you need to buy this permit. You need, I said, prove the law to me. So my house went up. I'm still here. Okay, and that's the point, and that's the, the the reality of the light. You know, what is a bank? A bank is an artificial creation that was done by, you know, even you could even do a bank. Everybody goes, oh, I always love it when people go, let's do a promissory note, promise to pay. And I've had people trying to rope me, write me, uh, rope me into that one and go, well, I'll write you a promissory note, and you write me a promissory note, and then we'll go bouncing that back and forth, and then we'll start claiming that. And it's like, no, because I'm not a bank. I'm not going to claim to be a bank because if I do that, then I'm liable. And then that way when you do that and do the promissory notes back and forth, you go to jail, folks. I promise to pay. That's what you've already got, a federal debt note that says I promise to pay on a federal debt note. So, you know, when you want to play their game, they, they've got it so put together, so ways to – uh, to come back after you. And, yes, they let a few people be, go through the cracks, just a few, because they got a, they know a few people will get through the cracks, but they know so many people are out there that is coming out there to, to do it. So I mean, you go into public law 445.5, violation act of penalty of violation of contracts. That's a contract. 
So when you're doing a promissory note, that's a contract. So you're violating federal law by creating a piece of paper to put a debt note on it. So and that's what horrifies me. What's going on in, in California right now? Because they're, you know, got the water going off. They got the, all that. How's that going to affect the sewer system? You know, you got to think. If you don't have water, where are you going to have to go to the bathroom in your backyard? What is that going to do? You already got people in San Francisco already defecating all around the streets and the cities and the counties already doing that. So now you're creating. So oh, what is that called? More disease. So we're going to create more disease, so that way uh, we got the medical society making more money coming in after you for more financial structure, and you don't even get what you're destroying your own bloodline, your own children, everything else. You're 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 destroying all this stuff. And so, I mean, and that's the other point that I want to get into because I will get this out and I've done this already. And this is dealing with uh, private armies, all right? They call them private armies. That's your police department sheriffs. They're private armies. But actually, by federal law, they cannot be that. It's a crime. They're prohibited. And that goes by martial law. And not only that, beside martial law, that goes by... um, uh, militia, militia, and so the militia is the one that has the military authority, and the militia has the authority if they are lawful constitution authority of militia. They have authority over the regular army, navy, whatever, because your actual militia are under their constitution. And I watch all these guys. Oh, they got all these militia sites all over Facebook and all this stuff. And I always ask them, are you a non-profit? Oh, yeah, we're a non-profit. You're not a militia then. You're, you're a structure to a foreign corporation. You know, that's like the gas prices in California. They say, oh, that's an accident or that high. They're not an accident. $5 a gallon of gas? I mean, and you go to the Midwest right now, in the Midwest, the average gas is $1.67, $1.68 a gallon. You know, Oregon, we're paying three twenty nine for a basic gallon of gas. You know, I mean, you know, we got a $2 tax on our gas that goes right to the state of Oregon to the pocket of the legislative council, your senators, your congressmen, so that way they have party money. You know, I remember when I was up at the Capitol back in 2005, the uh, Department of uh, uh, Oregon Department of Transportation, just a one biennium, $500 million. Where did it go? People are trying to get an answer from it, but nobody's giving an answer. They won't give an answer. You know, and this is the point. In Texas, I mean, you know, California, the average gas price is just in some places is like four forty and five dollars a gallon. In Texas, the gas price is a buck ninety five. In Arkansas, I think it's a dollar sixty seven or dollar sixty eight in Arkansas. So I mean, and we are paying these high inflationary prices because technically we were supposed to be down to the structure of a dollar or ninety nine cents a gallon of gas. But that's when they killed Gaddafi because Gaddafi was selling it, going to be selling it to us, at to us to the pump at your pump for ninety nine cents a gallon. That's why they killed Gaddafi because the bankers didn't want it. You know, and this is the one thing that you know now the California utility companies got caught, and so they have to admit that they started some of these fires. I mean, you got to remember, they're doing this to, 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 to burn you out of your homes, to take your homes. They're doing this to deprive you of your rights. And so that is the point that people don't get it, you know. And what future are you having? You know, what future do you care about? Whose future do you care about? That is the one thing, whose future? Is it yours or somebody else's future? Because, you know, if you don't start protecting your bloodline and start comprehending this reality, you know, and and realizing that Newsom of California governor is the nephew of Pelosi, I mean, I'm going to be putting this uh, video up. We'll get that video up, and I'm going to try to get it set up so we can play it next week so you can actually listen to this little six-minute video. And it's interesting when you get to start playing the the structure, and you get to know what what it is and how these people come out with their fraud. 
You know, they got to keep their fraud going so their grandchildren get all this money at your expense. So anyhow, um, I've got on on this, but let me make sure that you comprehend this one. We'll get it up. Complaints against the government. They actually have a complaint deal. That number uh, for the federal government is one eight four four USA Gov one. So you get a hold of them personally, and we'll get this up so that way. And I've already got it posted on our Facebook sites, you know. And then the other one, report of vehicle damage, government vehicle damage. Because see, remember, if you're registering your vehicle in the state, and it doesn't matter where you state, because you're, uh, the state owns that vehicle when you register it. So uh, to report a vehicle damage, that's one eight six six four hundred zero four one one. And you got to remember, if that vehicle that you got registered, the state's claiming it, you have to report the vehicle so that way you can write off the taxes and all that stuff to the state. And I was working on that before I had my uh, first heart attack and started being attacked because I was writing that up for a couple people in the Oregon State Senate because I was proving the point. Because when you register your vehicle, the state owns the vehicle, so they're liable for the maintenance, tires, roads, everything on it, spark plugs. They, they're claiming ownership, so they have to be liable for the maintenance of it. You know? And that's the point, is look at the facts here of how it works compared to what we think it works. Educate your children. You know, I mean, you know, I, I, a lot of stuff that I learned, I used to watch these videos, and I used to play them when I used to go to sleep. I mean, even growing up as a kid, I used to put a lot of this stuff when I grew up as a kid, you know, listening to the radios, you know, what talk shows that were talking about what was going on when I was growing up as a kid compared to today. So, and that's the other point, with reckless driving in government, you know, you got to report these things. It's your responsibility to report them. Nobody else's. You're the government. Look in the mirror. You, if you're bloodline native, you are the government. You are the fourth branch. I mean, you got these people out there trying to convince the fourth branch is lawyers and attorneys or the newspaper. No. The fourth um, branch. Correction, Ed. We're actually the first branch because oh, without us, there is no other branch. Yeah, correction. Go ahead. We. we the living men and women of America, of the 48 colonial states, or, yeah, whatever you want to call it, continental, continental whatever, the 48 right. states, we living pe men and women are the first branch of government. Yep. Because without us, there is no other branches at all. Correct. And that's a fact. Yeah, but see, I mean, I, I, I get confused on that sometimes because Judge Scalia was the one who put that one on the fourth branch in his writings. And you are correct when it comes down to that one right there. And so this is the point that we've got to be able to state the tracks, the facts. We've got to be able to present the evidence. You know, because I mean, I've already been arguing with the, with the county because I filed originally on my property taxes and proved the fraud back in 2013 on them. And they all got pissed off at me. You know, I can't tell you how many times I got pulled over and had guns to my head. Had my my uh, covered wagon hooked up by a tow truck and stolen. You know, told if you keep pushing this head, you do this, we're coming after you. I know, I hear the clock. So let's open up the floor. Are you sure, Ed? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you... Okay, because I mean, we don't want another four-hour one. Anybody would like that? Anything? Okay, I think we got no. Nobody wants to add anything. So with that one, then we're just going to call it a night then. And we want, to, we want to wish California the best, the people in California, what they're going to have to experience and what they're going to lose their children on and 
you know, possibly life, more life. How many people are going to die over this? So, anyhow, with that, may the great spirit look over you. May Mother Earth feed you, and may the Creator bless your family. Uh, thank you very much for listening to Disclaimers by Ed Johnston. Uh, sorry, uh, I have to keep track of Ed. He'll go on for hours just talking. Uh, but the thing is, the normal human attention span is only about 15 minutes, so you'll have to rewatch this show multiple times in order to catch the tidbits and the good information. So uh, when it goes uh, live, because uh, I'm sure I'm I'm streaming it live, but it's not evidently showing up on YouTube right now. So YouTube yeah. is uh, nitpicking as they normally do. So with that, guys, catch you next weekend on Saturday at five o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and uh, or five o five. It depends uh, because sometimes it takes a little bit to get things going. And yep. uh, have a great week, guys. Enjoy ha- All Hallows' Eve. Enjoy the time that, uh, if you believe in it, where the uh, veil between the spirit realm and the uh, uh, mortal realm are actually very, very thin. So, uh, see you next month. Tech- well, yeah, next month. Bye. Yep. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, there. All done. Let me uh, 